Hey guys, Victor here, and today I wanted to do a discussion on Labyrinth, which is the deck that just won, you know, the 2023 German National Tournament, and is on pretty much everyone's radar after, you know, it's very dominantly was able to win the finals after it resolved Eradicator and looped the opponent for pretty much their entire hand. But uh, don't worry about that, because I'm here to help you understand this matchup a lot more easily, as this deck is actually, like, really manageable. It's just, um, much like Branded, it's a deck that constantly gets put to the wayside and gets disrespected, and then once it becomes disrespected, that means people don't side for it, they're just not prepared for it, and then it tends to, like, you know, uh, just ruin everyone's experience for the tournament as it racks up easy win after easy win, so... Uh, yeah, with that out of the way, let's just jump straight into the discussion. Now, before we can get into, like, how to beat the deck, we have to, like, you know, first establish that there are two main variants that you will be playing against when it comes to Labyrinth. The first one is the more traditional, you know, like, Floodgate Heavy, which includes cards like Anti-Spell, Dimensional Barrier, Ravelry of Warlords, Goes and Match, you know, just all the cards that you pretty much just never want to see, but are pretty much always going to be, like, in those traditional stun anti-meta decks, like Eldritch or uh subterrors whatever and um then you have the other variant which is the furniture variant which pretty much like tries to turbo out their turn one big welcome labyrinths because you use cards like your torby to set your big welcomes or your regular welcome labyrinths and then thanks to coco clock if you discard it you'd be able to activate it that turn and thanks to that uh this is going to be the deck that more traditionally is going to have easy access to being able to eradicate you first turn, but the end boards that this deck provides honestly aren't that oppressive compared to the set 5 because they only have like 1 to 2 back row, and that includes, you know, like the, um, the eradicator. So that means you typically only have to deal with like the 1 welcome labyrinth as opposed to the more traditional variant, which is, you know, set 5, turn brain off, try to just stop everything and stop your opponent from playing. But, um... They do actually end up sharing similar weaknesses with each other. And because a lot of the times, like, this deck just gets stopped by the same cards that hurts the other variant. So you don't really have to worry about preparing for the other one, you know, like, in a different sense. As the cards that you will be using are good against both versions. It's just, it all depends on, like, how you use the cards. So, with that out of the way, now we can focus on how to actually stop the decks. Now, when it comes to the weaknesses that both decks have, the main one would have to be when it comes to their Welcome Labyrinth. But specifically for Big Welcome Labyrinth... Uh, so even though this is the most important card of the deck to make sure that it resolves, a lot of the times it's just not going to because of the fact that we, um, as players, you know, tend to have cards such as Ash Blossom and Joy Spring in the main deck. And there are a lot of times where just one singular Ash Blossom on either the Big Welcome or the Welcome Labyrinth can straight up end the turn. But um, in addition to that, there are also a lot of players currently playing Ghost Bell, which uh, when it, against like big welcome labyrinth because it does have the text that it can special summon from the graveyard even if you don't have a labyrinth monster in the grave they can still go spell it which you know um uh, much like ash blossom can sometimes just straight up end the turn so if you end up having cards such as like ash blossom and go spell in your hand prioritize using the go spell on big welcome labyrinth and then saving the ash blossom for regular welcome labyrinth uh but if you don't like if your hand's like super good it doesn't really matter just you know little things like that can help you go a long way in actually helping you win the game but, um, yeah, like, this deck, much like Branded, can sometimes just straight up crumble to getting hit by a single Ash Blossom. So, um, if it does become, like, more relevant, you should definitely see, like, an increase in this card. Because, let's face it, not everyone is playing Ash Blossom because it's not the greatest against other decks. But against Labyrinth, it's just, it's OP. <laughs> and then, um, next, let's talk about the, you know, the elephant in the room that everyone is focusing on, being the Virus cards. Now, unfortunately... There's very little counterplay to this. Um, the only card that really, you know, counters trap cards in this day and age with Red Reboot Band would be Cyprim Epsilon, which much like Yama, you know, you reveal it, you negate a trap, destroy a special summon itself, but uh, let's face it, it's just not worth it <laughs> in a lot of situations. But, you know, some players, to some players, making sure that a virus doesn't resolve is the difference between winning a game and losing a game. So you might see people become like a little bit more desperate. And if you want to be like on the uh, weirder train, there are other cards too, such as like Crossout Designator. You can play three Crossouts and then you just side the Eradicator. But uh, yeah, you're, you're pretty much just like contributing to your bricks at that point. So I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that the viruses, especially in the furniture build, are one of the main reasons why they help you win, whether it's Eradicator, Deck Devastation, Full Force Virus, whatever. Uh, you can't really do much to these cards. But 
something that you can do in addition to the Cypher from Epsilon is you can play quick play spells such as Cosmic Cyclone. So cards like Cosmic Cyclone, Twin Twister, and while Twin Twister isn't really all that great in the current format thanks to decks like Runic existing, Cosmic Cyclone is fantastic because it just, you know, if the, you do end up getting Eradicator, you can chain this card and then you can target another trap card that they have and you can end up banishing it. And if you're able to get something like a Welcome Labyrinth, honestly, with the Cosmic Cyclone, that's huge because that means they won't be able to recycle them from the grave or even hitting like a Floodgate, right? Because something that these decks have in common when it comes to Floodgates is that they both play Skill Drain, which, you know, can sometimes straight up win a game on its own, especially when you combine it with cards such as the Viruses. So, yeah, just um, if you get Eradicated, make sure you have as many Quick Plays as possible to actually help you out, like, win the game. And Cosmic Cyclone just happens to be one of those really effective cards and it just does so much to help you like, you know, actually combat the matchup. But if you're playing against like the set five variant, uh, Cyclone, while still good, isn't really all that effective because a lot of the times those cards are chainable and they're always backed up by other stronger cards. So what you can do is you can play cards such as Harpy's Feather Duster and Lightning Storm. As you know, if your opponent's setting five, these are pretty much like the best go-to cards to be able to blow up your opponent's back row and just straight up win the game. Now, I do not recommend using this against the Labyrinth or the Furniture variant, just because like they're like I said earlier, a lot of the times they only have like one, two, maybe three cards set at most, and they're all chainables with one of them pretty much always being like a virus or something. So these cards are gonna get destroyed even before you have a chance to activate them. But uh, I guess the set five version, these cards come in clutch and the same can go, can be set for like evenly matched, right? You know, just activate evenly matched in battle phase, make them banish all, pretty much all their resources. And a lot of the time, just them losing all those key trap cards can win the game outright if you're playing just like a set five version. But uh, with that, that's pretty much all you can do against the Labyrinth deck. I know it's like really simple, but <clears throat> what's there to say, you know, it's a floodgate deck at the end of the day or a trap heavy dependent deck at the end of the day so there isn't really much you can side but the stuff that you can like you know prepare for it is extremely effective in helping you win the game and with that that's the video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please feel free to like comment subscribe and i'll catch you guys next time see ya